Okay, thank you. Thank you, Manus, for being here at this excellent course that is improving every year, and uh, I like it uh, very much to be here. So, uh, I'm sorry, this was uh, my disclosure for this technique. I don't return uh, about bone defect, but uh, we all know that they're important. We need to look for them. We, need that, we know that 90% uh, of the unstable shoulder, they have some kind of bone defect. So it's very important to have a, a diagnostic algorithm because it's important to look for the bone defect. And it's also important to have a method. There are several methods, and there is a significant variability in the way the glenoid bone loss is measured and calculated. And uh, looking at this review, it looks that uh, despite you can be more precise with newest methods, um, uh, the PICO method is pretty reliable and precise. And so my diagnostic algorithm, when I have an unstable patient on my office, is just to do x-ray to look at the glenoid, with a true AP or a Bernageau. If there is a, a bone loss, I do a CT scan. And then it's also important to look at the other side on the humeral head and to have a 3D CT scan to look at the, at the positioning. And of course, if we have a vital, uh, I mean acute and subacute bankart, uh, bony bankart, we can just repair with the suture anchor technique. This is not a problem. Problem is when we have a chronic cases with uh, uh, bony erosion or uh, old bone. What is significant? That changed during the years, starting from 30% in 2000. And now the most recent uh, review, they say that uh, between 10 and 15% probably is a critical point for uh, our you know, uh, fixation only with the soft tissue. And of course, you know, we have to look at uh, both sides at the same time, thanks to the Itoi and the Giacomo and the others. We know that we have to combine the two bone defects, and we know that even a smaller bone defect on the glenoid, if it's uh, bipolar, is really uh, very unstable. Uh, thanks to the Pascal Boileau, we also know that, uh, you know, we have to consider other things. Is a score is uh, uh, maybe not uh, accepted uh, every, uh, everywhere from everybody, but I think it's uh, give us a good indication for the risk of uh, recurrence rate. And so, uh, what to do in cases of glenoid loss, bone loss? This, there is no consensus. This is my treatment algorithm. I think that we, when we have a real uh, minimal bone loss and uh, uh, you know, yeah, IZ score less than three, definitely soft tissue repair is good. When it's higher than this, I think it, you know, there is no only soft tissue latarge. We, we, have, we have just seen different techniques. We know that there is a white and black, but there is a huge gray area where you need to fix the bone defect, but still you can reconstruct the calcium, re reconstruct the ligaments. And so this is my, the algorithm I followed for several years, dividing acute or, uh, or subacute cases, meaning that no more than three, year, here, three years history of dislocation, less than five episodes. Most of these patients, they have still a good capsule and good ligaments, so you have to repair it. And probably, and actually, I'd say you don't have uh, to have the uh, action of the conjoint tendon for fixing the shoulder. Of course, chronic cases are different, and they have a different indication. But also for that, we have newest technique. We have uh, uh, also the uh, other possibility, like, for example, a subscaptino disease, which is actually the, the indication. Uh, the first time I, I was thinking that it was a good idea to uh, drill the glenoid from the posterior portal was 2004 in San Diego, just an experimental on cadaver. And 2005, I showed uh, this using ACL guide, uh, how to drill it and to uh, transport, uh, you know, the bone graft in the joint. Then I was fixing that with the screw. In that case, is a, a bartender close to my hospital that has now 15 years follow-up and is doing well. But of course, you see, even with a very good, uh, you know, uh, healing of the bone graft, the uh, direction of the screw, which is not ideal. And so I thought that was a good idea to change this. And, uh, you know, st I started to develop a uh, guide uh, years later with a double tunnel. And, uh, you know, in those cases, I thought that I would keep it simpler, you know, trying to, uh, to be precise using the guide for uh, dry, uh, drilling the bony tunnels and to have a, a technique that is safe. And the technique safe is just to have uh, two portals in the, in, the, in the joint and we are far away from any nerve anteriorly or posteriorly. And this patient, I, I showed the... the, the the technique yesterday, so I think, uh, you know, we're really uh, running uh, out of time, but I did uh, with the new technique, with the buttons, 152 cases, and I followed uh, 72 patients. After my publication, I had one case of uh, uh, dislocation again, but, uh, you know, the recurrence rate is uh, really low, and uh, with uh, following my indication, we have excellent results, 
and you know the precision of this uh, of the guide allowed me to pr to place the the graft very precisely exactly where the bone loss here i'm using four buttons because i think like the latoche you can do with one screw two screw for sure if you use four buttons you have better rotational stability immediately then you can say you can reconstruct the capsule and the ligament we do but i think a, a better reconstruction of that regarding the in bone integration we used over the years allograft at the very beginning autograft but i have banned on that a uh, long ago so i have no complication because i don't harvest the cor the iliac crest anymore and more recently we are using a xenograft that actually they showed us uh, the amazing results there uh, they have a much less resorption than any other uh, allograft we have used and also the other guy that they had the opportunity to do to to look at that and uh, when it's to look at the one year follow-up they have an amazing good in uh, integration of the xenograft and the other advantage is that that is pre-shaped for this technique uh, regarding mobility and complication this technique has really no complication very very mild regarding you know uh, the advantage uh, the advantage of the bone block versus soft tissue repair is that the, there is a lower recurrence rate and there is anatomical reconstruction of the joint meaning soft tissue and bone at the same time versus bristol latage is that is anatomical, there is no tendinous transfer, and in this patient with following this indication, there is no need of the conjoint tendon. The perfect positioning of the graft, and of course, using the buttons, we have no problems regarding to the screw pos uh, positioning or uh, you know the graft positioning. The weak point of this technique is when we have a very bad and weak uh, soft tissues. And so, uh, until uh, very recently, I was doing the, the latage. Uh, I published uh, two different techniques, a variation of uh, the existing latage, the arthroscopically assisted, that for me is the safer way to do a latage, just starting like a bone block with two tunnels, with a guide, and then, you know, all the risky part, arthroscopic, just open and finishing open. And uh, of course, I, I do also, you know, the all arthroscopic, and I think there is one point apart the risk that is still uh, not the same than open, the preparation of the lower face of the coracoid. If you do that open, it's more precise, it's more flat, and adjusts much better to the anterior glenoid neck. Anyway, um, thanks to the help of uh, two Italian surgeons, uh, Maiotti and, uh, and Russo, wanting to combine the bone block with uh, uh, you know the, the subscaptino disease, I was quite reluctant, but I started to do this in cases of chronic instability. And now we are collecting data of this technique, which actually uh, is the same. This is the first case uh, we did in Rome with Marco Maiotti. I went down to help him. And uh, then they started, and uh, I also started to do this technique, which is the bone block. And at the end, when we have a bad capsule and bad ligament, we add the subscaptino disease. Our hypothesis is a non-inferiority than Latage. And it seems it's, it, it, it is. We are going to publish soon our data. But at the end, we think that with this technique, it's safer. There are, there are no difficult portals. There is all in the joint. And uh, the second thing is that, uh, uh, you know, we don't cut any bridge. If it fails, we have always, always the time to do a lot of jet. Otherwise, to do the opposite is very difficult. I don't think it's a good idea to use the bone grafting after a lot of jet when it fails. So this technique basically is the, is the same technique of the bone block that I showed you yesterday. The major thing about this technique, I, st I still think, is the guide with the double tunnel that allows us to be perfectly perpendicular to an interior face of the of the uh, of the glenoid and uh, the the tunnels are perfectly parallel at the very beginning when the buttons were not available we were fixing that with the screws and we have uh, published and demonstrated that we have a, a posterior tilting of the angle of 1.5 degree which is much better than any anterior guide published there they have a four or five or 19 degrees for the arthroscopic latage using the screws and so the positioning, the fact that the tunnels, the bony tunnels are open, there are only the suture, there is a bone marrow flow, uh, flowing from the glenoid to the, to the graft or, or to the coracoid. And I think with this would help to uh, have a, a better uh, um, bone integration. Then, uh, you know, the compression device allows us to stabilize very well uh, the graft to the bone. And at the end, in these chronic cases, uh, we added uh, the upper part of the subscap, like at two o'clock, uh, with a, uh, 
with a suture first technique, uh, you know, this uh, five minutes step. And uh, this stabilizes uh, this shoulder very well and uh, it's mimic uh, the action of the conjoined tendon. Of course, uh, you know, we can debate why or this works or not, but it works. And uh, I was totally amazed that there is no restriction or very mild restriction of external rotation. Uh, in uh, R2 position, almost no restriction. In R R1, there is a little restriction. They are studying this because they started this technique, you know, of uh, the subscap tenodesis a long ago. And what it seems it, it happens, we have an MRI study, is that the upper part of the subscap, little by little, the touches from the glenoid and forms a scar tissue that works as a neoligaments. Anyway, uh, you know, also for chronic cases, now we are comparing, you know, Latage with uh, bone block uh, plus uh, subscap tenodesis. Uh, I cannot say that 100% uh, um, sure, but looks like a, uh, it's a good indication for this patient as well. And uh, it's all arthroscopic, all simple, no difficult portals outside the joint. So, in conclusion, okay, this is the experience of the three of us with this technique for these cases. Uh, in conclusion, my preference is when it's possible, I like to do a bone block with reconstructing the capsule and the labrum. I like anatomical reconstruction of an uh, unstable shoulder. When this is not possible, I think we have several possibility, and uh, one of these possibilities looks like uh, bone block plus uh, subscap tenodesis. Thank you very much for your attention.